friends, Christian and I are here to tell you about how I canceled my wedding, but then I got married in Vegas the next day. So I guess I've been keeping a secret from you. I know Adam posted about it on social media. I did not. There was a story behind that too. So if you're interested about how I had a wedding, then canceled it, then got married in Vegas on the fly the next day, Christian thinks it's hysterical. Please keep watching. So fun. I posted a video on Instagram. I could, you're so excited. I'll pop it up there just so you could see it. Somebody asked me about my foundation on my last video and I was showing you guys while I was feeding him. It was so funny because he was watching my hands and imitating my hands. And I got so many comments back about how he is learning to speak in my Italian hands. Oh, he's so excited. Okay, so let's stick to the task at hand. Adam's sentence for you guys that are new here. Hello, my name is Ro. My husband served a ridiculously unfair sentence in federal prison. He was sentenced to, listen to the number, 213 years, served 20 before we were able to get him out and proceed to live our happily ever after. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Oh my God. They just called me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. I will be back. So this is it. This is it. All right. So I'm all about believing in your dreams, fighting for what you believe is right, never giving up on what your true desires of your heart are, law of attraction, manifesting this, that, the other. There is my miracle manifestation proof that it works. But I always said while Adam was inside, I would not marry him despite us calling each other husband and wife for many years. He started that, I wanna say back in like 2009, 2012, something like that because of our serious and deep commitment to one another. He's like, she deserves that title out of respect. It's just that we didn't have the legal documentation. Now, side note, I just want a disclaimer that I learned throughout my years as a prison wife, by the way, if you don't know me, I started a nonprofit called Strong Prison Wives and Families, where we supported prison wives and family members and people who are impacted by incarceration. It's impacted the word, yeah, no, I don't know. Ever since Christian, I almost called him Adam, ever since Christian's been born and I'm not sleeping at night, I lost words. I don't have a vocabulary. I will turn to Adam and be like, what's that word? Or is that the right word? It's just, a result of not having enough sleep. Case in point, it just took me forever to be able to formulate that and get that out of my mouth. Anyway, I always thought prior to meeting a lot of prison wives who were actually legally <laughs> married that there is no difference, right? But then I learned that there is a huge difference because of things like child support and stimulus checks and moving across the country and then parole and probation when that's time. It's so different and there's this added layer of difficulty when you are actually legally married. So I wanted to put that out there and disclaim it and, and say, I don't mean any disres disrespect to anybody who has that additional layer because it sucks. I never had that. I didn't have to deal with that because legally on paper, Adam and I were not married. Another sidebar because we're full of them today. Look back on my past videos if you're here because you found me because you're a prison wife. That's my advice to not rush into a marriage when you're involved with an inmate. There are many reasons, go to my red flags and my green flags in a prison relationship videos, but there are many reasons why somebody on the inside might push to make you or want you, they might want to get married to you in a split second, like literally four days later, be like, let's get married on paper. There's no reason that you need, in my opinion, to push. I did 11 years with Adam out of his 20 and we never were married legally on paper. Okay, that said, whew, that's like a four minute disclaimer. Do we need all of it? I don't know, do we CJ co-star? No, okay. 213, I always told Adam because of his number of years, it's such a big significant number that I always told him, let's not celebrate Valentine's Day. We're gonna celebrate 213 as our day of love when you're out here because it took a tremendous <laughs> amount of love and dedication and elbow grace and every adjective you can think of for us to get to the outside because of that 213 year sentence. We called it a mountain that we needed to move that existed between us. I feel like I'm speaking sign language. Put your hands down, girl. I don't normally drink coffee. It was a very rough night last night. I was a coffee addict up until little man a couple months ago because breast milk and his him not napping. So I drank some this morning and 
you could see. You're trying to talk to? So I apologize, sit on your hands, girl. I've been accused of not being able to speak if I sit on my hands and I feel like it's true. Last year, Adam and I were going to get married on February 13th. We were kind of rushing to do it because I was pregnant at that point and we're like, you know, for insurance reasons and for the baby and for his birth certificate, last names, this and that, let's just go ahead and do it. Winds up, the one and only Saturday of the entire year that Adam had to work was that day, it was 2.13. So we were like, mm -hmm, not in a rush. I'm not the girl that dreamed about my wedding since I was eight years old. And neither of us really cared that much about it. His insurance was fine. He stayed on, CJ stayed on my insurance. Nobody cares about last names. So it's fine. 2.13 came and went. We didn't even revisit our wedding after that. We're like, nah, it'll happen when it happens. Fast forward to this past January, we've got CJ, Adam meets this amazing woman who becomes a very dear friend who was a US attorney and then she was nominated to become a judge. And so we were out to lunch with her and she's just like the best person in the whole entire world, just so friendly and fun. She asked me about when we got married and I was like, oh, well, you know, we're not really legally married. We just say that, this and that. And I got kind of like, not shy about it, but she said sheepish because it's kind of embarrassing to backtrack and explain that after you've been saying husband and wife for so long, you guys know. And she was so sweet. She didn't miss a beat. She goes, oh my God, the only reason, obviously she's kidding, but the only reason that I'm excited to become a judge if I do is can I please, 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 please do your wedding? And we're like, yeah, sure, oh, great. She's like, and I love weddings. Can I be your wedding planner? Like I'll plan the whole entire thing. After I told her, I could care less about any of this. I'm not into it. I love girly stuff, but not like the wedding girly stuff, if that makes sense. I love hair and I love nails and I love clothes and I love heels and heels and more heels. But wedding stuff, like never really, it just wasn't my thing. So I'm like, girl, do it. And then she was like, really? Are you sure we can really do this? And I was like, yeah. Full force was like, all right, when are we doing this? How are we doing this? What are you wearing? Where are we doing it? So Adam and I were like, oh. <laughs> we should probably get a little serious about this. We only had two or three weeks to do this. So the list is there, contacted the venue. We're waiting for a huge business deal of Adams to come through. We didn't hear back from the venue yet, but we're like, all right, this is it. Give her the list, give her where we want to do it. We're checking it out, sending her pictures. She's getting ideas of how she's going to help us decorate this and flowers and you guys know. So one Saturday morning, we wake up and Adam's like, what do you, oh no, it was a Sunday and the next day was a holiday. If you guys watched my diaper bag that got stolen video, here comes the story. So he's like, what do you want to do today? And I said, let's go for a hike. I really want to go up a mountain. We haven't done it in a really long time, or I haven't. He went up that morning. This was the second time. We go up and down the mountain, come back to the car. The window is smashed. They stole my diaper bag with my wallet in it, meaning now I don't have any credit cards, no ID, nothing. Next day is a holiday. That Tuesday, I'm canceling credit cards, this and that. Adam comes in and he's like, the business deal fell through. So as we're talking through this, the wedding comes up. I don't remember if we got a text. I don't remember what happened, but we're like, wind's knocked out of our sails. The business deal, I have no ID. We have no credit cards. You don't have that little cushion anymore that we were gonna use for the wedding. So let's just not do it this year. Let's do it next year, no big deal. So we call our dear friend, the judge slash wedding planner slash extraordinaire. And we're like, we're not gonna do it, here's why. And she's like, you guys, you have to do, no, remember, she's a dear friend, she's allowed to say this stuff. Basically wouldn't let us cancel. She's like, you have to, have to, have to do this. Listen, you live in Las Vegas. You can get a marriage license 23 out of 24 hours a day. That's not exaggerating. 365 days of the year, no holidays, no weekends off. Literally, you guys, literally. Actually, Valentine's Day, and this year actually more than Valentine's Day, we found out was 2-22-22 were the biggest days for people to fly to Las Vegas. Like people are kind of over having big weddings since COVID. She's like, just, you can literally get your license and get, or any ID and get your marriage license that day, wedding that day, no big deal. Don't cancel it. We don't even have to do it big. Get me 10 people or under and I'm gonna hook up with a friend, get you a venue, we'll take care of it. You guys just work on the ID and the marriage license. That's it and a guest list. So we're like, 
okay, I guess it's happening. I called my dad, I'm like, listen dad, I don't have an ID. My license is still in New Jersey. Can I get it sent to your house and you send it to me immediately? He's like, of course. Oh, and by the way, can you get plane tickets to get here? By the way, it's the Super Bowl. And we're like, whole, holy mackerel, it's the Super Bowl. The time that we had planned this was kickoff. So we called the judge again, we're like, mm, it's also Super Bowl Sunday. Let's just cancel it till next year. She's like, I don't care about the Super Bowl. Do you guys care about the Super Bowl? We're like, no, we don't watch anything. She's like, perfect, let's do it. Game on, pun totally intended. You're just helping me tell the story, right? I don't tell it as well as you? Yeah. So I order a dress, the picture I will pop up there is gorgeous. This dress is gorgeous. It's due to be here February 9th, my wedding's February 13th. Coming from Europe, I'm like, we got this. Hopefully I don't need alterations with my new mom bod, but we'll just deal. Ordered CJ a tuxedo. My dad got plane tickets. Adam's mom got plane tickets. The rest of my family couldn't make it. We're gonna do something next year. We had to keep it under 10 people. So we had a couple of other friends from here and that was it. Beautiful. Set up a Zoom link. Thank God my dress arrives a little bit early, January 22nd, and I get it and I'm excited. I think my wedding dress is here and I ran over to the mailbox. And the judge was like, listen, Adam, you're not allowed to see the dress. Cause he was like, I don't care, show me. And part of me was like, no, you can't see me. And he was like, who cares? We're beyond that. And she called him and she was like, you're not allowed. She was on my team. Right. I go in the other room, he takes CJ into the guest room. I go into the bedroom, I try on the dress. It fit like a glove, which was amazing, but it was terrible. <laughs> there were threads poking out everywhere. The bottom was see-through. This part just didn't match or fit right. There were these like this gorgeous chiffon, puffy sleeve. It was not, it was like tied around here. I'll put pictures. I tried to make it work, but it was like this awful prom dress. Out of sight, out of mind, right? I'm like, let me bring it to the dry cleaners, get it steamed. Maybe that'll puff everything back up again. I'll get a slip, maybe some crinoline. We're gonna make this dress work. No big deal. I just kept calling this my fake wedding. Like my practice wedding, next year we'll have the real thing. I'll have my family here, etc. Drop the dress off the dry cleaners. And in the meantime, oh, something else dramatic happened. I don't remember. Something else dramatic happened where Adam's like, I can't even focus on this wedding. Like, I don't care. We're supposed to be writing vows not even thinking about it. Here we are, the Wednesday before the wedding, Adam's mom flies in, February 9th. Pick up my dress from the dry cleaner. We saw the judge at an event the day, I keep calling her the judge. She's a very, very, very dear friend. I just don't want to use her name, but I see her at an event. She's like, did you get the dress? Did you try it on? And I was like, oh, it's awful. And she was like, okay, no problem. I'm gonna look for the dress I wore to my engagement party. It was beaded, it's beautiful, you could wear that. She's like, you could go to David's Bridal, get something off the rack. There was a couple of other places. Girl, you live in Las Vegas, not a big deal. You're fine. Send me pictures of you wearing the dress. I will tell you my God's honest opinion and then we'll go from there. But don't stress, you got this. You don't even need a wedding dress. That's the reason I ordered that dress. I didn't want a traditional wedding dress. I felt like it was too much to get married in a suite at the Cosmopolitan at 43 years old after having a baby. If you want to and that's your thing, girl, do it, live it up. Wasn't my thing. Like I never envisioned myself getting married in a Cinderella gown. Sent her the pictures of the dress and she's like, well, it's not my favorite, but if you need to, like if you can't find something else, it'll do. So I'm like, well, I can't stand it. It's not your favorite. You're being polite. It's terrible. We're getting something else. So that Thursday, Thursday before my wedding, which is on Sunday, Adam's mom and I go to David's bridal. I found something that was a step above what I had, but it wasn't my favorite. It would have done. Oh, I told them my budget was $300 and I still didn't want to come close to that. I found a second one that kind of like had a sailor top, all lace. My boobs looked great in it and it fit me well, but me. I sent pictures to my sister, who is a person who dreamt about her wedding since eight years old. Do you want to come here? And she's like, mm, they're okay, like they'll do, but I could tell you don't love them. And I didn't. Adam had dropped us off at David's Bridal and he took the baby to a cafe in the shopping center right next door. We could walk there. So we walked there. He was like, listen, my friend told me about this place called Brilliant Bridal where she got her dress. There were like discounted wedding dresses. I told him, I said, I know when I was looking yesterday, I found them on Instagram but it was like 70% off designer gowns and it was $2,500 gown that somebody got for $1,200. I'm not paying $1,200 for a dress that I'm getting as a last minute thing. He was like, well, she told me that she absolutely adored her dress and she got it for a little over $100. And it's literally around the corner, around like 500 feet away, not even. I was like, well, can't hurt, let's go. Let's try it. So I walked over there, the girls were adorable. They were dolls and I was like, 
kind of have a unique situation, but maybe not so much. I ordered my dress online. It was terrible. I need a dress, but I need it by Sunday. This is Thursday. They were like, girl, that's not unique. That's easy. We've done dresses and alterations in less than 24 hours. You're good. So she's like, what size are you? What are you looking for? And I'm like, I have a mom bod. I really am digging lace right now. I'm not sure why, but honestly, I don't care. She said, what's your budget? I said $300, but I'd like to go under that. She's like, okay come with me, takes me to the section of dresses that would fit me. And she goes, do you see all the bags with pink tags? I said, yes. She said, they're designer dresses that have been marked down to $95. And I'm like, pick the pink bags. <laughs> we pulled a whole bunch of dresses. There was a $95 one that I adored. I absolutely loved it. It was like a designer size. So she's like, these are typically smaller and we couldn't get the zipper up. And I'm so mad because I loved it. But, and there were a couple of other ones. One was absolutely stunning, beaded to the floor. And it had like all of this like, tool coming out of it backless and it wasn't white it was silver it was beautiful but i felt it was way too much for a hotel room wedding and she's like girl this is your and she talked to me just like this like girl this is your wedding you could wear whatever you want if you love it and you want to be a princess get it and be a princess and i was like mm, and i saw in adam's mom's face she was kind of we were like this but we weren't saying anything she goes i was loving the beads down the back of the dress i've always loved that for a wedding dress i think it brings it up a level she's like "Ooh, i have a dress that i think is gonna work for you let me go get it so she goes to get it and it's perfect it's perfect the front was very plain it was lace. The back was all the way open, had pearls up the bottom of it. It was just fabulous. It wasn't too much. It was just enough. The only okay. issue was it was big on me. Not too big. It just needed to be pulled here and a little bit here. And she's like, we can get you the alterations for $250. You're still under your budget. And I looked at Adam's mom and I'm like, I'm not paying double and a half for alterations. So it's like, I have a woman who could probably do it for me. If not, I'm not going to do it. She's like, cool, take the dress. Took the dress, cost me under $100. She saved the day. Okay, so now dress issue resolved. Friday, my dad's coming into town. Everything's checking into place. Friday morning, I had to pick up Adam's ring because totally forgot about rings. I was using my mom's ring. This is actually just an everyday ring that I got from Amazon with the engagement ring he gave me. So I don't knock stones out of my mom's ring or anything like that. And it's too big and it needs to be sized. I don't have a jeweler here that I know or trust yet. I'm all over the place, but that's where this ring, $10 ring from Amazon, isn't it great? With Adam's, my engagement ring on top of that. Okay. So had to go 45 minutes to get his ring because they didn't have it at the place here. Got that check done. While I was there, I stopped by the mall. I got a clip for my hair because I didn't want to wear a veil. Now here we are Friday afternoon. I made myself lunch. Adam's mom and I had to run out, get a couple of things. I came back and I told her, I'm like, I am just so tired. Like I didn't even feel like vacuuming my house for my dad to come. I'm like, <laughs> new mom, he'll understand. I just like got hit with a wave of really, really tired. So I said, I'm gonna lay down for a bit. I'll take CJ with me. I don't know if you wanna hang out, if you wanna lay down. She's like, I could probably use a nap too. So I laid down for an hour, about an hour and a half. I did not fall asleep, but let me tell you, girl, my stomach, I've never felt cramps in my stomach like this in my life. I didn't feel like I had to be sick. I, it just felt like my stomach was expanding and shrinking and expanding and shrinking. And in fact, I was wearing a one piece jumper and it had an elastic here and where the elastic touched was excruciating. I've never felt pain like this in my whole entire life. It was like, I ate something bad. It just needs to pass. So Adam comes home and he was like, okay, we have to leave in about 15 minutes to go get your dad. I was laying in the bed in excruciating pain. And he said to me, I'll just go get him. You just lay down. And I'm like, no, I miss my dad. I want to see him. He had a respect for my dad. I want to go pick him up with you. As we're leaving, I said to Adam's mom, I'm like, my stomach is still a mess, but I don't feel like anything. I don't feel like it's, I have to be sick. I don't feel like it has to come out. I just feel like it's Ew, it was the worst pain of my life. We go to the airport. I was in the passenger seat. Adam was driving and the closer we got, the worse I felt. When we pulled up to the terminal to pick up my dad, I got in the back seat because I wanted to give my dad the front. Adam's tall and the baby seat is behind the passenger seat. I wanted to give my dad the leg room and I literally laid my head down on the center console. My dad's flight was a little bit delayed. I said to Adam, I'm like, I gotta run out of the car because at this point now I feel like I have to be sick. I'm like, I have to go find a bathroom. So I go down, I get sick in the bathroom. You know when like you get sick and it's just the biggest relief? That's what I thought would happen, but it wasn't. I actually got worse from there. 
I come back and my dad and I meet. I gave my dad a huge hug and I'm like, dad, I don't feel good. My stomach is killing me. So we get in the car, Adam and my dad were talking. I was laying in the back seat. I started to get chills. I felt like I needed to be sick again. We got home. It's about a half an hour to the airport. I made it half an hour, got home, but I got out of the car. I walked right to Adam's window. My dad was not even out of the car yet. And I was like, help him with his bags. I have to go inside. I run past Adam's mom who had CJ. And I was like, now I'm starting to get sick. And she she didn't hear me. She's like, what? And I'm like, I have to get sick. So I ran into the bathroom, got sick, and then changed my clothes. I was in the closet. We have a walk-in closet. I was in the closet changing my clothes and Adam walks in and I was shaking like a leaf from the chills. And he's like, what's going on? I was like, I don't know. I have the chills. I'm getting changed. I laid in the bed. I didn't even say another word to my dad all night long. I felt like a jerk. And I just went to bed and I was sick. What felt like every 10 minutes all night long every which way. And the stomach cramps, you guys, were out of control. I've never felt cramps like this in my entire life. I told Adam, I'm, whatever I ate for lunch was bad. I gave myself food poisoning, this'll be fine. It, and he's like, what did you eat? I said, eggs with spinach, and we had a sweet potato that I had made to puree for CJ, I never got around to it, so I just chopped it up and put it in my eggs. That's probably what it was, because I put it in the refrigerator hot, maybe it built up like some condensation, maybe that, I don't know. But all day Saturday, I was still sick. I slept on and off all day, couldn't keep anything down, sips of water were going through me. Adam had food poisoning last year and the same thing happened. He was sick all night long. The whole next day he couldn't get out of bed and then it had passed. You know, like by the third day, you just feel dehydrated and weak, but you feel better. So that's what we all thought was gonna happen. Sunday morning, I woke up and I still felt terrible. I told Adam the second I woke up, I need to get a COVID test. He called all over the place and then he remembered that one of his friends had four at-home tests. So we called her, he's like, listen, can we take one of those tests? She was like, of course. He went to go get it. We took it, I was COVID negative. And just for everybody who's wondering, because I had a lot of people wondering, no pregnancy either. Absolutely not, there is absolutely no way. Everything confirmed by tests. Not pregnant, it was definitely either food poisoning or a bug or something. This is my wedding day. I felt like crap. Here it is, time to start getting ready. Adam's like, what do you wanna do? And I was like, I don't know if I could do this. Like, I couldn't stand up for more than a couple seconds at a time and I felt like I needed to sit down. So he's like, can we do it sitting down? And I was like, I mean, I guess, but I just feel terrible. He's like, what if you don't even worry about hair or makeup or the wedding dress, go as is and we'll just do it like that, who cares? I said, me, I will not go to my wedding without feeling like I look presentable. I don't have to be decked out. It doesn't have to be over the top glam, but I also don't want to feel like I look like I have a stomach bug. <laughs> I want to feel good. Even if that meant not wearing my dress, I would at least expect my hair done and some makeup on. I didn't get a manicure, a pedicure, could care less. I could barely even shower at that point. So he was like, okay, listen, we had a lot of people cash in a lot of favors for us. This is a one-time deal. If we cancel it, it's not gonna happen again. At that point, starting to get teary-eyed because I'm trying to push to get this wedding to happen, but I felt awful is an understatement. I've not been sick like this in probably 20 years. Not an exaggeration. The irony, because I don't get sick. My dad comes over and he like had one heart to heart one on one with me and he was like, bro, I don't think you should do it. You look terrible. I could see that you feel awful. Do not push this on account of me. He knew what I was thinking. He was like, I can come back. It gives me an excuse to come back and see my little buddy. You don't want to remember your wedding day feeling like this. I could see how sick you are. So I said, thanks dad, I'll figure it out. We all talked about it and I'm like, let me get in the shower. Let's see how I feel. I got in the shower, I felt awful. Adam had run out to go get me some Pedialyte and some coconut water. That's the two things. Oh, and some pretzels and crackers. That's what I asked for. At this point, I hadn't eaten since Friday afternoon. I got in the shower. While Adam was out, I started to blow dry my hair in the bathroom. I couldn't do it. I went into the bedroom. I plugged the blow dryer in, sitting on the bed, like doing a blowout. I was breaking out into cold sweats. When he came home, I had the blow dryer on the bed and I was laid out on the bed. Like I just needed to rest. And he's like, what are you doing? And I explained to him that I was trying to blow dry my hair and he's like, what do you wanna do? I started to kind of get teary and I was like, I don't think I could do this. I feel like I'm letting everybody down, but I'm telling you, I'm not being a baby. If I tell you I can't do something cause I'm sick, 
I can't do something because I'm sick. Remember the time? I am not saying I should have done this, you guys, but I did it. History is history. It's done. I can't take it back. I'm not suggesting that you do this. Do not do this. But I drove six hours to visit, sat in a visit room for six hours, and drove six hours home with the shingles. If I did that in that much pain, and I am telling you I can't do something because I'm sick, please believe me that I can't do something because I'm sick. I am heartbroken that I have to cancel this, but I cannot do my wedding today. I, there, I can't even be well enough to blow dry my hair. I can't stand up in front of people. I don't want to remember my wedding like this, like my dad said. He called the judge. She was trying to think of every which way to try to help us to do it. Couldn't do it. Called our other dear friend who made all of the arrangements for us. She had our cake, she had our flowers. She's like, first of all, she's like, are you sure it's not cold feet? And he started laughing. He's like, no, this has been going on since Friday. I don't get cold feet like that. I do get nerves, but I've never had nerves that paralyzed me to that point. Like I'm talking public speaking, stuff like that. So he's like, no, she's sick. She dropped off the cake, she dropped off the flowers and she's like, it's fine. When you're ready to do it again, we'll do it again. No rush, no big deal, focus on getting better. All day Sunday, I slept all day again. By Sunday evening, I could keep in a couple of pretzels, maybe a cracker or two, but really nothing. So Monday morning, I woke up feeling not 100%, but a lot better. Adam's like, do you wanna do it today? Our parents are still in town. If the judge is free, what do you think? And I said, yes. I feel well enough to be able to function. Like, I don't feel 100, not ready to eat a steak dinner, but 100% I can, can do this. Called the judge, she was like, oh my God, absolutely, I will be there. I have cases until three o'clock. Do you guys wanna come to my courtroom? And Adam goes, let's go to this one park where we shoot a lot of videos. It's a beautiful backdrop. And what's ironic is Adam has said, since we moved here, every time we've gone to that little park area, with the beautiful background, he's like, we could get married here, it's so pretty. <laughs> Talk about manifesting, right? I got myself ready, we did it. And the best part about the whole entire thing was the judge, oh, she said, obviously 213 just was not meant to be. The past was meant to stay in the past and your wedding was meant to be today because it's a new chapter. That part's behind you. This is you guys moving forward. So I love that because my anniversary is Valentine's Day, which I felt to be a little bit cliche. And for me, I'm not, my, my anniversary is Valentine's Day, the end. But for anybody else who wanted that day and loved that day, I love you for it, do it. For me personally, I kind of felt it was a little cheesy for us. But with that connotation now that I will always have, I love it. And you know what, if I want to celebrate my wedding anniversary on 213, why not? I can, who cares? No one's gonna remember or know the day that I had the ceremony. We do have it on Zoom. It wasn't the best internet connection, but if you guys want to see it, I can make a whole separate video of the whole ceremony itself. It was small, it was wonderful. My dress was at that point enormous on me because I had not eaten in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, almost four days at that point. I was still pretty dehydrated. I lost most of my milk. I did get it back. Do you guys care? No, but the whole point is my dress was pretty enormous on me at that point because it was already a little bit big. It doesn't matter. It, the pictures came out beautiful. It happened during the most beautiful pink sunset with like cotton candy clouds in the mountains behind us. It was absolutely gorgeous. I already filmed this video once by the way and it, I felt like I was being boring. So I'm retelling it. I'm sure there's more in that one that I'm leaving out. If there is, I'll try to kind of edit it in. I'm sorry, CJ is. He was being better in the other one. He's just being an eight month old. My little baby. Our little miracle. He was the best man. Best, best man ever. So we did it. We're happy. I'm officially Mrs. Clausen. Little man has been so good. Yeah, he needs some attention. We love you guys so much. Say bye. Bye. Do your bye-bye. Do your bye-bye. We love you guys so much. I will see you in the next one. Mwah.